Hello and welcome back to Prophecy of Pindor and our Iron Man challenge. Now you can see here that I have nine units. Don't worry, I didn't lose all of my army, even though <laughs> that would be kind of likely considering the amount of risky stuff that I'm actually doing right here. Now what we're going to attempt to do is we are going to try and break out Archon Alistair, who has for some reason gotten himself taken prisoner. I'm not a big fan of that, <laughs> so we're going to try and get him out of there. Let's see if we can sneak in to Ravenstern. Ooh, all right. So we're un <laughs> unlucky in that regard. Let's try and fight. All right. This is going to be a bit problematic. Alright, not bad, not bad. We actually did manage to kill all of them with a, well, what I can only assume is some kind of knife and a loot equipped. So yeah, now we have the opportunity to go into the tavern, marketplace, so on and so forth. I actually came in here at night with a very specific goal in mind, and that was to hopefully be able to, you know, circumvent any of the problems that we just saw right there, which is actually kind of a shame and what we are going to need to do now <laughs> oh dear this is this is really bad placement i don't know whether you can see this right here but look at this guy so there's a guard there guard there and two guards over there those guys are going to shoot me immediately there are very few blind spots as you can see there's a blind spot here and there's a blind spot over here a little bit less so so what I'm going to have to do is I will have to attack this guy as soon as possible. Basically just try and blitz him down really, really quickly. Steal the keys. And then <laughs> just hope. Just hope. Let's do it. Okay, there we go. We got it. Nice. And now we can go in. There we go. So that's basically all I needed to do. I was very, very lucky that he wasn't actually wearing a helmet, because if he was wearing a helmet, I would have done basically about 20 damage, and they usually have about, I don't know, 50, 60 HP, so it would take quite a bit of time to do that, and as you could see, I did get shot in the back by one of those wardens, and it did do quite a bit of damage. Anyway, I've come to get you out of here. Oh yes, and uh, I think... Personally, Alastair will probably be able to help us. So I'm going to say to him, grab a weapon and help me despite your weakness. Let's do this. Ooh, I'm a bit worried about that now. I am actually kind of worried, but we're going to try it. Let's do it. Okay, I'm out here and uh, I'm a bit worried about this. I'm, I'm going to just have to help him like super hard. I actually don't even think he needs uh, needs to really help. Wait a minute. Is he attacking someone? No. Phew. Okay, I was a bit worried about that as well. Anyway, uh, now we're going to have to fight through the streets. I hope he's not going to be too overzealous. Can I command him? I can. Oh. Oh, that is insane that I can command him. Oh, you're, you're dead. You're not an adventurer anymore. Thank you very much. And you are dead as well. And there you go. We freed Archon Alistair. Very, very risky to do this. <laughs> So many risks that we took there. We gained some honor, and we also gained some relation with Alastair himself. I actually could marry Alastair if I wanted to. I don't know whether that's really going to make that much difference, though, because it doesn't really do anything for us, because he's already a vassal of ours, and we don't really gain any, any particular power spike from it or anything like that. Now, I am going to have to be very careful here, because I am actually going to have to run back all the way to our territory. This was partially the main reason, well, partially the main reason doesn't really make any sense, but anyway, partially the reason that I wanted to take Talon Crag Castle so that we could expand our very limited territory in this area. I'm actually going to start hiring a couple of random units here as well, literally just so that I can have an additional small little force just in case I get attacked 
by something or someone. Here is the Jatu army still. They're still kind of mulling about in the same way that they were in the previous episode. I gotta say, I personally feel like we will be able to do this. You can see the, the quality of the rest of their units. And this is basically a Jatu army with... Uh, 200, 200, so 400, 470 or so. Yes, yeah, so they they've got about 500, so 50% of their units, uh, with very quick math right there, are decent, and they're going to be quite hard to deal with. But I think, personally, once Alistair is back on his feet, because, of course, that was also a bit of a reason why I wanted to try and rescue him, because, let's face it, having a vassal of yours in prison is really not the best idea is it no it's pretty awful so i decided hey let's uh, let's start off the episode with a little a little prison break now i am actually having some issues getting back to laria that's where all of my units actually are at the moment and we are also going to need to partake in the noldor tournament so i'm at a, i'm in a bit of a, a bit of a time limited situation here I'm hopeful that we'll be able to make it back without suffering any problems. But bear in mind that if I do get attacked by, for example, this, I'd probably be able to achieve victory. Maybe. Because uh, bear in mind, most of my companions are pretty strong at this point. They're not the strongest, but they are able to sort of hold their own, I guess. And uh, yeah, it would be a shame if we were to get killed literally just because I'm running around with a prisoner taking force rather than anything else but there you go all right so mercenary sharpshooters can go in there anything else that I really want to take well iron knights are actually really cool at the moment as you can see they're actually wearing wearing they're riding their falcon horses now and the iron sergeants still do not have a main weapon so that's also kind of the main reason why I'm not taking the iron sergeants anywhere at the moment because they're literally not going to be able to do that much so it's kind of advisable not to do that, you know, just in, just in case, you know, you don't really want to run around with a force of units that is literally consisting of a bunch of randoms with quarterstaffs. <laughs> yeah, quarterstaffs, really not the best idea. So I'm, I'm going to just leave them there until we have the go-ahead from Lethal Durin because he's going to be coming back relatively soon. Also, someone did mention in the comments that, uh, and, and asked... Why am I sending off uh, my trainer, who is in this case Little Duran, for three weeks? Well, I'm actually doing that because someone in the comments actually did the math and it apparently works out better to send him off for three weeks than it does for four weeks because of the intervals of stat increases, if you know what I mean. So he's going to gain, a, a, or shall we say the, the sergeants and so on and so forth are probably going to gain a stat increase every, I don't know, every three days or something like that. And because if you select four weeks, he's gone for 28 days. So you technically waste, I mean, if it's three, if, it, if it's every three days, then you technically waste a, a whole bunch of time. And I think it's better generally just in case you want to also change the trainer in question too, because you can also do that if you want. But otherwise, it kind of made sense to me because I kind of like to see the companion come back a little bit a little bit more frequently, I guess you could say. Now, I'm not entirely sure how long it's going to take. Oh, Talonkrag Castle is now under siege. Are you serious? I don't have time to do that, unfortunately. So I will have to go there after the Noldor tournament. But I'm going to just take you over here so that we can actually have a look uh, and see what's going on. Ah... Uh... Uh, oh no, this is really awful. I have no idea. Okay, well, sure. <laughs> we gain honor and renown. That's pretty good. And the relation with Whitestack Castle has deteriorated. Not entirely sure why that happened, but I don't really mind about that, to be honest. So, ah, there's a baggage train. Fantastic. I like that. And also, it's going to take two days. Okay, so basically what I've done is because our iron sergeants do not have 16 strength to be able to use the doom mace i decided to upgrade their ranged weapons instead and i've also done that for our iron knight so as you can see they're also going to take about two days to upgrade the maiden crossbow and i think personally until they have about six in power draw 
I'm not going to be giving them actual bows. It is just not going to make any any sense whatsoever to give them a bow that requires three in power draw. It's just really not. It's going to be pretty awful to do something like that. So generally, I'm going to keep, give them give them crossbows for the moment, and then we'll see how it goes later down the line when they have actually started increasing their uh, their archery proficiency. So let me actually just take a quick look here. Okay, I'm fine. Everyone else is fine. Yep, I think so. There we go. Okay, so let's go in. I don't know how it's going to be, but uh, we'll we'll try our very best. And uh, well, maybe I can just eliminate this guy. That's going to be kind of nice. Oh no, he survived. He survived just enough. Ah, there we go. That's all I need. Thank you very much. That's great. Okay, four teams with two fighters each. Oh, I got a two-handed sword. All right, two-handed sword might be a little bit problematic. Yeah, nice one, Noldor Ranger. Yeah, that's that's. See, now here's the thing. Usually in these kinds of tournaments, a little bit of a, a little bit of a hint for those of you that might have a couple of difficulties. I know I've had difficulties in the past, but basically the best way to go about these is determining relatively quickly whether your team is going to be the thing that will carry you to victory or whether you need to be more aggressive in getting your two minimum kills that you require to get to the next round. That is basically the key to getting forward in the Noldor tournament without having to really work that hard. Although it is a little bit of luck sometimes. Anyway, four teams with two fighters each. This might be a little bit problematic for us. I mean, not, not problematic in that way, but it might be problematic to... Uh, okay, this guy's coming for me. I don't know why you would. Okay, there you go. Done. <laughs> that was kind of amusing. I thought that that guy would run over to the brown team or something like that because they were maybe a little bit closer, but uh, it worked out. It worked out really nicely for me. Anyway, this is a free-for-all. I have a bow. Hopefully brown is going to kill yellow. Yes. Okay. Come on, yellow. Why are you? Why are you? Why are you focusing me down? You're gonna die. You know. Yeah, that guy's gonna die if he if he continues to ignore. Oh, never mind. Okay, this this is problematic. This is this is very bad, actually. Okay, maybe he's gonna run into. No, never mind. Okay, should I just kill his horse? Let's just kill his horse. Try and do as much damage as I can. Ooh, yeah, I knew that was a Twilight Knight because he took so much damage. Wow, pretty crazy. Yeah, these guys are so good because they just have crazy good proficiencies. And those things are, wow, they're going to absolutely swing any weapon at the speed of light, basically. So it's very, very quick. Two teams with one fighter each. Fighter the next round, let's do it. And, okay, they have a two-handed sword? Right. This is actually perfect for me. Um, I'm gonna try and kill his horse so that I can then shoot him from range in the face <laughs> and there you go there you go that was a strategy that was a strategy and a half wasn't it okay and then we have the final round oh dear this is probably gonna be potential loss for me Ooh, okay, that was really, really close. That was actually probably one of the closest tournaments that we have so far had here. And again, we are not getting a Qualys gem. Can you imagine how unlucky that is? Because I think there's... what What is it now? I think it's like a 20% chance that we will get a Qualys gem. And yet, I have only gotten one once in the entire time that I have been doing these tournaments. So... That's that's kind of harsh, to be honest. Anyway, we are going to go very quickly over to Talonkrag Castle. I'm hopeful that maybe Roland will be over there, maybe doing a little bit of... Oh, Talonkrag Castle is no longer under siege. Okay, that's fantastic. That is really good. That means I can take my time a little bit more. I don't have to worry so much. 
And uh, speaking of that, maybe I should just stick around here for another two days because now that there is no pressing matter, I can basically just stay around White Stag Castle and I can uh, upgrade my units or, uh, you know, set them on the path to upgrading something new, which is going to be quite nice. And I don't know, are they actually besieging anything else? Poinsbrook, no. Castle Alden, no, 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 no. All right, that's actually fine. We might want to try and take Silver Edge Keep. Bear in mind that the Ravenstone have been attempting to also make peace with us. And they made peace one more time when I was off screen. Okay, there we go. They have now acquired those Maiden Crossbows. Now, basically what I can do now is I can go and I can tell them to... Uh, do they have... Mm, I'm going to just check real quick. These guys might have the opportunity. Yeah, there we go. Okay, so they have actually advanced in strength rating. And I am actually finally going to get them the Doom Mace, which is just going to be insane. These are these are the other things that they're wearing, by the way. And there we have it. Okay, that is great. That is really, really good. And now we will also be able to improve the equipment of our knights. They already have basically everything apart from gloves upgraded so what i'm going to do is i'm going to give them some bolts wow i think they can actually use muskets did you see that i think they can actually use muskets that's pretty amazing all right so we're just going to give them probably mettenheim bolts yeah 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 mettenheim bolts are perfectly acceptable there's the falcon steed by the way i think we've had a look at that beforehand their leather gloves are the only thing that need to be upgraded really and otherwise that's going to take twenty thousand gold 12 days and uh, I think that is good enough. Yeah, I think that's actually really good. So it seems like Lethal Durin has done a good job in advancing them. As you can see right here, these are their current stats. Oh, they have six in power draw? How did he do that? Didn't they have one before? Oh, wow. Okay. And these guys, these guys have two. Yeah, so it might be good for these guys to stay with crossbows. But the other ones, they can, ooh, they can use some good bows. So it'd probably be a good idea for us to switch out the crossbows with our knights at a later point. Maybe once they have gone through one more training session or something like that. And then we'll see what happens. Warlord Zolkar running around with 1,330 units. What a crazy guy. Talancrag Castle is, as I thought, going to become under siege again. A.L. Darien of the Noldor was defeated? Okay. I think he just spawned in again, and he has now been defeated a second time, I think. And uh, I am a bit wary about who has defeated him for this second time. And there's Alistair running around with 130 units. Why is he running around with such a small amount of units when I have given him so much? I've basically given him Poinsbrook and uh, another castle, Talonkrag Castle as well. Not entirely sure why he's only got 130, considering Roland is running around. He's got 230 or 260 or something like that. Whoa! That's a lot of people. That is a lot of people that want me dead, isn't it? Wow. Oh, look at this. Alistair was once again defeated in battle. Why is he doing why is he doing this? Why is he doing this to me? I have no idea. Alright, I think we're probably going to be attacking this guy. Ah, I hoped to actually get him in a battle by himself, but oh well, never mind. I, th I suppose we'll do okay. 273 against us, and we have 294. I think that's alright, considering, uh, hmm, well, considering we are actually even in our battle advantage. That's pretty nice. So, I don't think we should worry too much. Hmm. I don't know about that so much. Okay, well, how much? Whoa, okay. That is some pretty serious muscle right there. We have 105 cavalry on the battlefield right now. I'm half tempted to literally just charge at them. Straight up. Literally. Because we have so many cavalry and a lot of horse archers. Not sure whether the battlefield size is going to accommodate so many horse archers because... We know what happens when horse archers have a bit of a problem with the battlefield. They tend to run in to the wall, the invisible wall at the edges of the battlefield, and they're completely useless as a result. So, not entirely sure if we can do that, but what I am going to do is I am going to start recruiting units 
for our knighthood order in preparation for the next episode because we are going to start taking our iron knight and our iron sergeants and training them in in battle basically training them in battle making them into the hardened warriors that we know they can be and just being absolute beasts because let's face it in about 12 days they're both going to have well one of them is going to have a significant upgrade in the form of the doom mace and the other is going to have a ranged solution of some kind because as it stands right now we don't have any ranged capability with them but it will happen it will happen so what we're going to do now is i'm actually going to charge my cavalry straight on in here and they're going to be a little bit uh, a little bit weird about things, the Ravenstone. As you can see, they're going to just kind of charge around there, which is absolutely fine. Don't really mind too much about that because I'm just going to go over in this direction, try and distract a little bit more than anything else. And look at how much damage my horse is capable of doing. Oh, yeah, yeah. Ah, ah, I forgot about that. I forgot about that. Okay, so I wanted to talk about the Pendor Royal Steed and the uh, Barding Quest because I know that a couple of people were mentioning that in the comments of the uh, previous episode and I just wanted to kind of comment on that and say I haven't forgotten about it absolutely haven't forgotten about it it's just the fact that I have mentioned previously in the series like I don't know uh, maybe 15 episodes ago I, I don't know exactly when I said it obviously but basically I said it's probably not worth the amount of money that it will take to get the Pendor Royal Steed and as I was saying in the previous episode as well it is just not the kind of horse that I like anymore I, I very much like horses that are just that little bit quicker and the Noldor horse does have a significant amount of armor as well it just doesn't have a lot of HP in comparison to for example the Neither World Charger the Neither World Charger is absolutely fantastic in that regard but the point is, is that I was talking for quite a significant amount of time about how I prefer faster horses and then a lot of people were commenting on the uh, Pendor Royal Steed which is in, in my opinion a pretty slow horse. I think it is a pretty slow horse. So yeah, but anyway I did go over exactly what was going on there and my thought process and everything about it and uh, hopefully that is kind of clear. Hopefully that's kind of clear that you know it's just way too much money for such a well I'm not going to say a terrible horse it's not terrible it's just that it is a little bit less good than you would want for that money do you know what I mean so that's basically what I'm what I'm saying about it so hopefully that clears things up a little bit I did mean to uh, actually say that earlier in the episode but I forgot about it so otherwise Let's, uh, let's tell our people to charge in once again, because it seems like they are having some issues here. And... Yeah, we are actually having some issues, aren't we? Yeah, we're having some pretty serious ones. That is kind of problematic. I think I might actually retreat. I think I'm going to retreat here. We're going to have a decent amount of wounded, but that's okay, because we have Anson. Hopefully he... Oh. <laughs> he did get himself wounded there which is kind of unfortunate but as you can see we are outnumbering them quite a bit i'm actually just going to leave i know that companions are probably going to get irritated at this because technically leaving a battle like this is running away but i'm actually not running away i just want to check my status of my various units here all right okay uh that is actually fine let's go in again and let's see what we can do okay so Basically, what I wanted to do there was just check what Anson's percentage is, and he has 25% HP. I think that should be enough to grant us some surgery skill and so on and so forth, and hopefully that's going to be enough to uh, kind of see us through to the next round or next stage of battles. And bear in mind that if they do end up attacking Talonkrag Castle, mm, I'm not entirely sure if I should go in there and actually defend it. Because if I do end up defending it, it's going to be either really, really easy to defend or it's going to be one of those nightmare defenses that literally takes a huge amount of our resources and it's just something that you just want to get away from as soon as possible, you know. And it could very well be that that is the case because, well, we've seen how it is to attack it 
And that means that, I mean, that's, you know, it's, it's kind of nightmarish, you know? It's kind of a nightmare to attack it. So I'm hopeful that it will be the same for the AI, but I don't really know whether that will be the case. Because the AI is a bit weird when it comes to uh, actually doing sieges and things. Sometimes they're just supernaturally good at those engagements, and it might very well be a bit difficult for us. So I'm not entirely sure how it will go. But what I do know is that I need to try and kill as many of these archers as possible and try and distract enemies wherever I go. And it seems like we're actually not doing too badly right now. I actually do want to do something, though. I want to get my cavalry over here, and hopefully we can do that before they actually arrive. Okay, now the enemy cavalry is actually coming over here as well. They're going to try and counter us. Oh, no, this is not cavalry. Never mind. This is infantry. Okay, so this is going to be kind of interesting. <laughs> Can you see my the green cloud on the battle map right there? That is going to be such a devastating charge. Look at this. Look at this. Coming in from behind. Wow, that's just crazy. We have 91 cavalry on the battlefield right now, which is also, well, partially the reason why I wanted to do a little bit of a flanking maneuver this time instead of the quintessential bear tilled maneuver, which is literally just a charge straight in. Or you could call it the King Harlaus maneuver, dependent on, you know, what you like, because obviously Swadian knights are literally just going to charge straight on in every single time. But otherwise, I'm going to tell my infantry to charge in as well now. Actually, should I? You know what? I'm not going to tell them to do that. I'm not going to tell them to do that, because I'm going to tell my cavalry to follow me. Because we're going to do a little bit of something something here, and maybe it will work out. Oh, I should have really waited and, and kept some of my arrows. It probably would have made more sense than anything else. Okay, come on now. Yes, there we go. That's what we like. Okay, so now, basically, it may look like I'm kind of taking away the cavalry support for our archers and infantry and so on and so forth, but they can definitely handle themselves. And what I want to do is I want to try and consolidate all of my cavalry here for a renewed charge in. And look at this. Look at all these guys coming coming behind me here. We're just going to charge them all back in here, and they are going to absolutely murder everything in their path. And if they don't, well, hopefully our archers and various other units will be able to pick up some of the slack. And at the moment, it seems like that is indeed happening, so it's pretty good. But this is definitely what I have to do when I have such a, a dominant amount of cavalry in the battle itself, because... For me, I haven't really had, I mean, yeah, I have had, you know, quite a bit of cavalry, but I've had more of a, a split between archers and cavalry for the most part of this series. And now that most of my units are infantry slash cavalry, I kind of need to make more attempts to strategize and, and use tactics with our cavalry. So, you know, flanking maneuvers and bringing them back from being engaged to, you know, charge back in. You know, these kinds of things are always going to help the momentum of the fight. Because I, I have talked about this before, but morale, morale damage is a big, significant part of doing battles. Especially in Pendor, when battles are much, much larger, they can have a really big effect on how the enemy is going to react to what you're doing and what, what they're capable of and so on and so forth. Because if you can do a really, really powerful, devastating cavalry charge initially, that is going to cause so much morale damage to the opponent. And then they will be able to, uh, well, then they'll rethink their options perhaps. And that would, be, uh, that would be pretty nice. But anyway, there you go. We did achieve a victory there. He did manage to escape, but this guy is okay. He's, he's a martial personality as well. Okay, we'll just let him go. Various loot. Give me that various loot. Thank you very much. Okay, there we go. Oh, nice, nice. Okay, so we actually have a whole bunch of pretty good units right there, and not many prisoners, but that will change very quickly when we have our Iron Knight and our Iron Sergeants in our party because they're all going to be equipped with doom maces or oh, it's going to be so much fun to see that do these horsemen level up into knights they do not so i will be leveling them up into kia guards instead all right so king gregory himself is actually here and i i assume yeah he also has the melatine mercenary company which is going to be very difficult to deal with those guys are 
quite powerful. So I'm not entirely sure what to do about Talon Crag Castle. Let me know what you think down in the comments. I thank you very much for watching and I will see you next time.